Good evening, Phoenixites. Happy Thanksgiving. This is our Thanksgiving service. We have an annual Thanksgiving service. So I think I'll start out with some Thanksgiving. Let's pray. Lord, I don't have time to thank you for everything you've done for me and my family and the Deliverance Center this year. I just don't have time to do it. Take me a good hour, assuming I can remember some of it. So I just want to give you a blanket thank you for all these people that have been delivered from demons here. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And all these people have been healed here. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for paying all these bills. Every single bill was paid. Not one nickel is owed to anybody Thanks to you, and thank you for your word and your grace and your mercy, without which I would not be standing here tonight. Amen. All right. Good evening. Tonight's uh, Thanksgiving service is our seminar on uh, divine healing. Okay? So uh, our featured... Uh, book tonight. There's two of them. I'll get to that in a minute. On divine healing, we're going to go through the ins and outs of it. I'm going to go through it quickly so we won't be taking any questions during the seminar. So I got too much material to share and we'll take some questions at the end of the seminar if that's okay. All right. And uh, my radio ministry has changed. Uh, I'm not on 1280 anymore. I'm now on uh, 1010 AM three times a week. Uh, Monday through Friday in the mornings and in the afternoons, and then on Sunday afternoon, I thought I would try to uh, develop something on a Sunday. Take a shot at it. See how that goes. All the radio programs are always on soundcloud.com slash hardcore-christianity. Thank you for all your donations. As I mentioned, every bill has been paid. We don't owe anybody anything. It's all paid up. Thanks to you, and thank you for your kindness. <coughs> All of our services are always live. Thursday night is on our live stream channel, and tonight on Fridays is on our YouTube channel. Last Friday I was not here. I was in Oceanside. Thanks to the ministry team. Karina was there. Kelly was there. Several others. We had two huge blowout altar calls. Uh, I got a lot of emails after the services. Some of the people were scared at some of the things they saw happen in the service, but mostly, about 90% of the people, they were in awe. So, you know, <clears throat> you always have, you never please everybody. And that's impossible. I mean, you could be perfect. You knew where I'm going with that. You could be a perfect person. You could be Jesus. And you could... Hack people off. It's part of life, hacking people off, and I'm relatively good at it. Let's continue here. <laughs> if you want to go into the healing and deliverance ministry, hopefully you do. Does anybody here f sense or have an urge or something you're being called in that direction at some time in your life? Okay. Okay. Uh, this section here, Deliverance Training Channel, would probably be a good a good way for you to start. There's 18 sessions there, and uh, that will send you on your way. Hopefully tonight will help you if you feel you're being called in the healing or deliverance area. You'll find this seminar very interesting. Okay? If you need one of my miracle lists, I send them out to troubled Christians or mentally ill Christians. Just send me an email, mike at hardcorechristianity.com. I'll mail that right out to you. Tonight's featured books with Lori in the bookstore is number one, uh, Christ the Healer. This is the greatest book ever written on divine healing, uh, as far as I know, at anywhere, ever. This thing is fantastic. In chapter 23, I believe, he's got uh, pages of reasons people are not healed, which is really interesting. This guy had a spectacular faith healing ministry back in the roaring 20s and in the 30s. He was the mentor to William Branham. 
Yeah, of course he died before Branham cracked up and thought he was one of the two witnesses But the first part of Branham's ministry was fantastic and Bosworth was the main figure behind it I wrote this little study booklet on atonement and healing and I break down the differences between a demonic root and a medical root you're sick for one or two reasons. It's either demons or it's a medical issue or trauma. Okay, so you got to be able to discern those two. And I broke down each healing in the New Testament and plugged them into the right categories. There's an inner healing section in there too. Okay, selling that in the bookstore. All right, let's let's get going. Any questions before we start? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna crank it. All right, YouTubers, let's go. Divine healing, the hidden secrets of the healing ministry. No one will ever know everything about the healing ministry. I certainly don't. It's very strange. There's always some mystery to it. And uh, nobody I've ever talked to, no minister I've ever, uh, you know, picked them dry, picked them for information. Evangelists, faith healers, I sit down and talk with them. Nobody I've ever known knows everything about Healing there's always some some mystery to it, but most of the mysteries or a good chunk of them. I'm going to clear up today All right, let's go to section one then okay You must believe and receive in order to be healed you have to believe and receive Matthew 13 this people's heart is waxed gross their ears are dull of hearing their eyes have closed. They don't hear. They don't see. Jesus said. He's quoting Isaiah. Lest at any time they should see and hear and understand and be converted. And you get healed. There's your steps. You ever watch The Wizard of Oz? Dorothy asked the munchkins, how do I get to Emerald City? And they said, follow the yellow brick road. I just gave you the yellow brick road to divine healing. A, you must open your eyes. B, you must hear. C, you must be converted. You must understand. Luke chapter 5, the fame of Jesus went everywhere. Great multitudes followed him. They came there to what? They saw with their eyes. They started to hear with their ears. They started to understand. And guess what happened? He, he healed them all. And the Bible does not record one failure. Of any person that came to Christ who wanted to be healed and had an open heart, there were zero failures as far as we know. Section two, you must understand the devil's power when it comes to sicknesses. And it's outlined clearly in Job chapter one and chapter two. In these two chapters, the Bible clearly says that the devil engaged in certain behaviors. In our society, we blame these things on bad luck, rotten karma, uh, the person, somebody, something, some system, a government agency. In Job chapter 1 and 2, the Bible specifically says that these murders were committed by Satan. Job's laborers, farm laborers were murdered. Lightning killed his livestock and some of his other employees. And it says uh, other Thieves came and stole livestock and camels from him and murdered some of his people. Also, it says uh, Job's children were killed by a tornado. Job's body was covered with boils. What wasn't destroyed? Your rotten friends. The devil will 
systematically remove every good thing out of your life but he will leave you with what he wants you to have and he left Job instead of killing his three friends he knew they would serve him so he left them there okay your mother's mad dog crazy she's not saved and she's pushing a hundred you can't believe it and she's driving you nuts and you're going hmm I cannot believe somebody this unhealthy and this, this hey the devil keeps alive people for a long period of time sometimes if they serve him I don't know if you notice this or not but people like Yasser Arafat and all these megalomaniacs on the world scene they seem to live until old age you know you would think they'd get killed off within weeks nah they've got protection it's like mafioso they're protected see your psychotic relatives are protected because they are being used to get to you the devil keeps using them because you let him keep using them you let him use them to offend you you let him use her to piss you off you let him do it and then you do exactly what he wants you to do so he prolongs that person's life they should have been dead years ago they prolong that person's life just to continue to torment you because you let it happen You have no idea. I don't even have any idea how many times I got an email or a phone call or something. Mike, you're not going to believe this. I was at the service Thursday or Friday night. This and this and happened to me. And the next day, I got a call. I, somebody came over. Somebody contacted me from their past who can do them absolutely no good. <laughs> you wouldn't believe how attractive you are to ex-girlfriends and boyfriends and lovers right after you get a touch from God you wouldn't believe how suddenly up oh, they pop in all of a sudden. there they are everybody devil murdering everybody off Job's family anybody could do him a bit of good killed him with a tornado controlling the weather says it right there but he needed those three friends they were protected it's a protected operation like the mafia. Oh, his wife, all the kids are dead, livestock gone, he's lost millions. Did she faint and have a heart attack? <clears throat> the devil said, Hold on, here, here's some extra strength. Go ahead. You're okay. Calm down. Now go talk to Joe. His wife comes in. What does she do? Oh, of course. Of course. What's the lesson learned here? Hey, it's always somebody you love, somebody you got an emotional hook into. The devil uses that person to get you when you're at your lowest. They're plants, they're being used. Why don't you just curse God and die? She said. Okay, whatever. But you can see here clearly that Satan's power included manipulating people to murder and steal. Controlling the weather and causing sicknesses. It couldn't be any clearer in these two chapters. You don't believe me? Go ahead and re please, please read it yourself. Why did all this happen? Well, there's been a lot of theories about how this story came about, and most of them are bad. But this verse here kind of reveals it. In Job chapter 1, it says, Yahweh or Jehovah said to Satan, where are you coming from? And he said, I'm going to and fro over the earth, walking up and down, spying on everybody. And don't think for a second, you are not under surveillance. You're a spiritual fool if you do not. You are spiritually ignorant. You think you're walking around, nobody's watching you? You are a gasping fool. You're being watched in the spirit world 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Somebody's watching you. Somebody's listening to you. They're watching what you're doing and saying. 
They're listening to how you behave and watching what you say how you react to other people They're watching what kind of sins you go for they're watching for the ones you don't go for You're being analyzed 24 hours a day seven days a week You're being set up for a future beating It's only a matter of time before you take it the devil's walking around looking at everything and then Jehovah says have you considered my servant Job? This is the King James Bible. Sumaleb is the Hebrew phrase. It means I see you've got your eyes on my servant Job. What happened was the devil had been scanning the planet and he runs over to see Job. He says, hey, what's going on here? He sees this multimillionaire with everything going his way. God's blessings pouring out on him. He watches Job sacrifice every day. Job is sacrificing like crazy. He sacrifices for his kids. He sacrifices for himself. He has sacrifices for stuff he thinks might happen. Even if he thinks they might sin, he has a sacrifice. Job's a hardcore servant of the Lord. Not like American Christians who they can take him or leave him. Job could not leave him. Job was a hardcore believer. Hardcore. He was staunch. And Satan noticed it and said, whoa, I got to do something about this boy. So the devil had targeting for termination. Just like, he, just like he'd done you. Remember that last business you had? Ooh, that thing blew, blew up in your face. Remember that last marriage? Oh, that was a Titanic. Those things didn't happen, happenstance. They, you were targeted for termination. You were watched. You were analyzed. You were spotted demons going to and fro. Hey, you got caught. You got found out. They saw you. They set it up to steal your business, steal your family, steal your spouse, rob your kids. They set it up. So Jehovah said, well, I'm going to pull a fast one on the devil here. I'm going to. I'm going to teach him a lesson he's not going to forget, and I'm going to save this lesson for Brother Mike 2,000 years from now, 3,000 actually, at the Deliverance Center. He's going to use this story that night, and some people are going to learn some deep spiritual truths. So he said, I'm going to set this whole book of Job up, and it is spectacular from beginning to end. It really is. The book of Job is like off the hook great. Well, what happens here? The Lord knew the devil would come for Job. So he provokes him deliberately. He didn't do it because he wanted to see Job suffer. God never wants to see people suffer. He likes you. Section three. Okay. You got to understand something here. God wants to heal and save everybody. That's his personality. Okay. If you go to Bible college or seminary or go to some religious school, you get a bunch of theories about healing, and they've got all kinds of weird stuff they come up with, and they pull scriptures out of context and try to make it sound the way they want it to sound. But here's the real truth of it. God likes to heal and save people because it's a reflection of his personality. He, God's a good God. God doesn't want to hurt anybody. He wants to help people because he's built that way it's not just because he chooses to do it he chooses to do things all the time but that's not good enough it's how he's built and that's why he chooses that all the time it's just how he feels it's just his personality temperament it's just how he operates it's just he can't help himself he's just a good person he's a loving person. He likes people. He wants to help you. He doesn't know how to do anything else. He can't figure it out. Matthew 18, Jesus said, it's not the will of your father that any one of these little ones should perish, he said. For the Lord is not slack concerning his promises. First Peter 3, as some are slack or lazy, he is long-suffering to us. Not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. What's that saying there? Listen, there's every single backslider on the planet Earth 
is supposed to come home 100% of them all of them God wants all of them come home. He wants everybody to get saved Muslim terrorists Hollywood whores you name it politicians that's as low as you can sink God wants politicians to be saved did you know that I know it sounds like blasphemy it isn't all people any person God wants to be saved Florence Perryville doesn't matter what prison they're in doesn't matter what jail they're in doesn't, doesn't matter what whorehouse they're in none of that matters none of it matters at all doesn't even matter doesn't matter at all that's how he's built he just can't get away from it he's I guess in a way he's stuck he is he's stuck he is what he is that's his personality see it's always to your advantage because he can't help himself you're not going to catch him in a bad mood it's freaky everybody I know or have ever known at one time or another got in a bad mood <laughs> 100% I was usually married to him, but if I wasn't <laughs> I've noticed that every single person I've ever known or ever heard of has always been at one time or another in a bad mood No, nope. father's not in a bad mood. He's ready to go He's not in a bad mood. You can't you know use it to your advantage You know what you ought to do is just go in and get greedy You know just start asking for everything Because he's stuck he has to listen to it because he wants to, he can't get out of it. You just went to Thanksgiving dinner yesterday, didn't you? Hey, you saw the table with the desserts on it. You remember before you got there, you told yourself, I'm not doing it this year. You couldn't help yourself, you were over there digging into the apple pie. God can't help himself, he wants to listen to you. Okay? He wants to help you use it to your advantage I mean, he can't get out of it he's he is stuck with it he likes you and he can't stop it you don't want to stop it most people who know you do want to stop it but he doesn't he wants everybody to do what stop living for the devil and come to repentance Every single person, all to come to repentance. Everybody, okay? He never picked out you to go to hell and you to go to heaven 50 billion years ago. That's all a bunch of theological crap. Amen. Don't ever believe any of that. That's pigwash. If you're breathing and you're a human being, Father's got his eye on that person. Now, they may not get saved, and most of them won't, but that's, that's not his problem. It's not his fault. He wants the person anyway. Addicts, addicts loves addicts. Criminals loves them. Businessmen loves them. Politicians bleh, loves them. <laughs> I see a politician on TV. I, I reach for the barf bag. I got a stack of them there. I got them off the airline. Bleh. Listen, Father wants everybody to get repent and get saved. That's how this thing works. It's how he is. First Timothy two. God who Thalo wants to wants to have all men be sozo delivered and come to the knowledge of the truth in Christ There it is Hebrews 2 through death Jesus might destroy him that had the kratos is the Greek word It means dominion the control of the dominion of death. That's the devil's realm okay? God's not out killing people making them sick giving them cancer Loading up the hospitals. That's all done by the devil. Father isn't doing that stuff. He's trying to get him out of the hospital, out of the sickness, out of the gang, out of the drugs. He's trying to help these people, not get them killed. Not the devil killing everybody. And he wants to deliver them who, through the fear of death, were all their lives subject to the bondage of death or the dulia, slavery of death. When you're a slave to something, you have no choice. You have to do it. And before the resurrection of Christ, you had to go to hell. You had 
to serve the devil you had to die now eternal life is available to every single believer and you will never die never go to hell <coughs> everything's changed now hey there's a new there's a new game in town the destroyer of death met his match at the resurrection of Christ First John chapter 3, for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might luo, unloose or untie the works of the devil. Just simple. The gospel is not rocket science. People with PhDs and Bible, they make it sound like it's rocket science. It isn't. The real gospel, so simple. So simple. Children get it. So simple. The devil's kicking your face in. Father's not happy about it. The Holy Ghost wants to stop it. Boop. There you go. You don't need a doctor's degree to figure that out. That's easy to see. That's third grade. Father wants you to be healed. Oh, I know what you're saying. Brother Mike, you don't understand. No, I don't understand everything. That's true. I understand that. You, you an addict, you, you, you got porn issues, you got lust here. Hey, Father wants to heal you. He's well able to heal you. He wants to save you. He likes you. Wants to help you. He will unloose you from the devil's bondage. That's what he does. You know, the devil ties you up in bondage. Drugs, alcohol, sex, whatever it is. It's like being in bondage. like being a prisoner. You do stuff you don't want to do. Romans 7. Paul used to be in that prison. Oh my God, I do stuff I don't want to do. Stuff I want to do, I don't do. He was in bondage. He said, thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, he got saved. Yep. Released. Unloosed. Luo. Loose. Luke 4, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Luangelion is the Greek word for gospel. It means good, great news. Okay? Being sick, dying, being ill, suffering, that's what we would call bad news. The gospel is the opposite of bad news. Polar opposite. Here you got bad news, here you got good news there. He has sent me to heal people who have broken hearts. Inner healing was mentioned first by the great prophet Isaiah and the Lord Jesus. Why? Broken hearts hurt more than broken bodies. A lot of people don't know that. They think if their body is healed, they'll be fine. It very rarely happens. The heart is the number one issue. Number one problem. Centribo means people have been crushed or shattered. Like you break a glass. Bang! Shatters. People's hearts can shatter. Through trauma, through disappointment, through all kinds of things. And to preach Ephesus freedom to the captives. There it is. Sicknesses, mental illnesses, emotional illnesses. All these things are bondages. Okay? Uncontrolled behaviors, uncontrolled attitudes, uncontrolled thoughts, uncontrolled words, like Job's wife. Blah, 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 blah. Every time she opened her mouth, vomit came out. <clears throat> She was in bondage to chronic negative thinking and speaking. Negativity. Some people, you, as soon as they open their mouth, something negative comes out constantly. You ever been around those people? Yeah. Usually when you're drinking, because they drive you to drink. <laughs> people that are negative really get on your nerves. And particularly when it's like Chinese water shorter. It's chronic negativity. Oh, wow. You're going, well, oh, please, where's the, where's the, where's the blade? <clears throat> well, you don't know. That's a spiritual bondage. That person has a critical spirit, a demon in their brain, and they, every time they open their mouth, <laughs> something nasty, negative, filthy comes out of their mouth. I'm not even joking. Aphesis means set free, having freedom from your insane relatives, your body that won't mind. Paul had the same problem. You know what he did? He beat his body. He said, I beat my body and I bring it into submission so that after having preached to everybody, I 
don't end up a reprobate. That's what it says in the Greek, a reprobate. It says cast away in the King James. Can you imagine that? Well, I'll tell you what, if Apostle Paul had to bring his body into subjection and control himself with his anointing, hey, what about me? Hey, I got I to gotta focus. Right? He didn't want to end up in bondage, physical bondage. You can't control your body. Your body gets away from you. you it eats too much. It wants too many orgasms. It wants too many comforts. Your body wants to control you. It does. It doesn't want to mind. I've rarely run into a person who had total discipline on their body. You? I mean, bodies suck. <laughs> they do. I'm not even kidding you. You got a 12 hour day ahead of you, you're so pooped that morning, you know, you need all your energy and it's not there. Your body will betray you all the time, always betrays you. It gets drifts off in bad areas. It lusts after things that should never even been going after. It drives you nuts. And recover the sight to the blind. People that don't see, people that don't listen, people that won't be converted so they can get healed, people that won't listen and understand so I could heal them. And to do what? Different English word, but the same Greek word. Ephesus, freedom to those that are bruised. Hey, emotional pain is worse than physical pain many times. You better believe it. <clears throat> My oldest daughter recently got divorced, and come to find out, I know I knew nothing about it. Uh, my son-in-law was cheating on her, not just once or twice, for over a long period of time. She knew about it, but they, they didn't tell Grandpa. Uh, anybody here, Grandpa? Nobody? Let me explain to you how this Grandpa thing works. Well, down the information line, you are the last one to get any information. Nobody, nobody understands it? Okay. No. Well, my son-in-law, hey, I, I love him and pray for him. You know, he had this lust issue they couldn't control. He couldn't get he could not bring it under control and his divorced now. He lost his daughters, my granddaughters, and all that this whole thing, you know, blew up, obviously. But again, it's that bondage your body brings you in that's so nightmarish. Why did I say that? Why did I think that? Why did I eat too much? Why did I go here? Why did I, your body will betray you spiritually. It'll get you to do things you shouldn't be doing with it spiritually. Yeah. You get in an argument and boy, your temper goes off and uh, boom! Hole in the wall. Your body just went with your Demons and your emotion and bang your body's out of control Thanksgiving out of control Bondage is when you're out of control <coughs> Healing all that were Karadunastuo means to be dominated by someone else But God's mission was to heal all who are what? He went about doing good God anointed Jesus with the Holy Ghost and power. John the Baptist worded it differently. He said, you will be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. Okay? Fire was a cosmetic term for power. Okay? Fires are powerful. Ask people in northern Arizona and California this year. Unbelievable power. Okay? Well, this is worded differently, only in this case, he uses the word dunamis. A lot of people have the Holy Ghost, but they don't have any fire or fire power of the Holy Ghost. That has to be developed. Every Christian has the Holy Ghost. Every Christian can cast out demons. Every Christian can pray for the sick and heal. But they don't do it because they don't have any 
power because that has to be developed. The Holy Ghost is given to you when you get saved. You are, are imparted into your spirit, man, a measure of faith once you're born again. Bang! And every person gets the same measure. But a year later, that measure is different in each person because each person develops their portion of faith differently depending on their circumstances their environment how they learn who's teaching them what they're teaching them etc etc so, <coughs> so, so some people develop huge portions other people Five years later, they're going over the same crap they were five years earlier. Uh huh. Yep, they got the same fire. They got a little a lighter, and it, sometimes it works. Five years later, you know why? Their, their fire, their power never developed in anything because they were so busy fighting with their relatives, fighting with their in law, fighting with the wife, fighting with the worrying about that, worrying about this, caving in over that, caving in over that, fighting at work, falling apart. Of There's my fire. Oh, it went out again. Oh, she needs God. I don't believe it. Well, I do. Everybody has the same portion when you get saved. But within hours, minutes, weeks, months, years, that portion is different in each different person. The people that have larger portions are able to cut through the crap. The other ones aren't. They're still doing the same stupid stuff now they were doing three years ago. Taking the same offenses now they took three years ago. The same person at work is driving them nuts now that drove them nuts three years ago. How's your How's your power? Well, hold on a minute. Oh, there it is. There's a. Oh, she's got you. Where's my lighter? Other people are able to take that portion, clear out the clutter, and go forward. Studying to so show themselves approved unto God, their portion starts to grow. It's not because God shows, yeah, you're not a healer, you're not, no, you can't, nah, nah, yeah, yeah, nah, nah, yeah, yeah. Are you kidding me? The Holy Ghost is taking anything He can get His hands on and using it. If somebody's portion is growing, He's on top of them. Can't wait to help them. Why? Because they're in the minority. The, the vast majority of Christians are useless, jacked up, spiritual imbeciles. And that's the good news. Let's go to the bad news. <laughs> Jesus had both because he had developed his portion. Oh, is anybody listening? Yes. Everybody has the Holy Ghost that's saved. 100% of them. Even backsliders have the Holy Ghost. That don't mean nothing. They can be totally useless. You got to have the Holy Ghost and firepower. What's the purpose of this seminar? To help you, encourage you, to kind of spark your firepower. Hey, it's right here. If you just step up and clear out some crap and go for it. What are you supposed to be doing after you develop your firepower? Yeah, you go heal heal everybody who's being dominated by Satan. Well, I don't know. I don't even know how to get a ministry. <laughs> are you breathing? Have you walked outside? Every freaking buddy you run into is under the domination of the devil. You want a ministry? Are, did you go to Walmart? Look like a freaking demon convention over at Walmart. What are you, nuts? There's a ministry everywhere. God Almighty! 
You don't even have to look for me. You could fall into one in about 15 minutes. Listen, it's not God, it's us. He's, a, he's out of the blocks. He wants to run this thing. And we're sitting here, uh, somebody said something in line. Oh, God, there goes my mom again. She's crazy. Oh, jeez. My son, oh, God, he's doing drugs again. Dude, clear your mom and your son out of there, dude. Hey, you got to call a God on your life. You don't spend your life wasting it over a son on drugs. Kidding me? Turn that person over to the Lord. The Holy Ghost knows how to break somebody on drugs. Trust me. Oh, he'll work it out. He'll crack them. You go do what's right. You know, quit this codependent crap. Just get it done. Yeah, break out. Jump. So what Wigglesworth told us. He said, fear looks, faith jumps. That's a good word from him. All he had was good words as far as I know. Section 4. <coughs> Always remember that in the Bible, in our society it's different, but in the Bible, it was never any different. Healing and deliverance always went together. Mark 9, John said, Master, we saw somebody ekbalaton. What does that mean? That means, ekbalo is the vocabulary term. It means to cast or throw something out. Ekbalaton means is in the present active continuous tense. So John and the other kooks called disciples ran across this guy who was casting out demons repetitively. Okay, he didn't just do it once. He was doing it continuously, probably holding some kind of service and blowing the, blowing the devils out of him. See, it was a... Present active continuous tense verb. Okay, so he was they saw him continuously doing it. So Jesus answers the question in terms of that verb. Okay. In other words, he this guy was casting out demons, he knew how to do it. He was using the name of Jesus, and he was doing it over and over and over again. So he's seeing him repetitively doing it. And John then becomes like a church person. If the anointing's on somebody else that's not in your group, they immediately get jealous and want to bring that sucker into their group so they can water them down. So once somebody gets loose and starts moving in the spirit, some, it's not the devil that comes for them. The church people spot them. And then they want to bring them under their thumb. See, and control them with their doctrine and their theology. Oh, wow. There it goes. Well, John says, hey, he wasn't with us. We're, we're with the main group. He was with some other group. See? So we told him, hey, dude, you didn't get your certificate from our group. You can't be casting demons out of all these people. What's your problem? Did I set that up right? <laughs> yeah, I was working on that one. I was working to set that up. And Jesus, check this out. He wasn't following us. He said, well, of course he's not following us. John and the disciples, they weren't doing anything. So the guy's not going to follow them. He already had the Holy Ghost anointing. He was already blowing demons out of people. And he's going to the next service to blow them out. I'm not going to hang around with a bunch of losers. <laughs> Why would he? Make any sense? He wouldn't follow us. Well, that guy, that guy's following somebody, but it ain't you, Einstein. It's the Holy Ghost. Well, we want them under our denominational hood. We want them under our doctrinal theology. We want them to get a certificate. We want them to wear our hats. Hey, the Holy Ghost don't wear a hat. He's looking for somebody who's ready to go. He don't care whether they're in church or out of church, living on the street, living in a penthouse. It don't matter to him. He wants somebody ready to go. And Jesus said, hey, whoa. He says, don't forbid him to do that. Don't stop that deliverance service. 
What's your problem, John? Surprised he didn't want to call down fire and toast the guy. John must have been in a good mood that day, so he just wanted him to follow us. <clears throat> he said, "No one can do a miracle in my name." Now that was mistranslated. Let's let's check it out closer. Uh, Poesy is a future active tense verb. Okay. Okay. It means it's an act of re repetition from now into the future. And he didn't say miracle, he said dunamis, a supernatural event. So Jesus bifurcated supernatural events. Demonic Holy Ghost. He said, no man can actively and repetitively now and into the future do a supernatural event in my name that would instantly trash me or run me down. Because there's a pattern of it. The guy they saw had a pattern of it. And Jesus said there's a pattern of it in the future. That was in the past tense. And then in the future tense. That person will never just flippantly trash me, he says, right here. That can lightly, taku, flippantly, quickly. Jesus, plah, I'm doing something. That's not going to happen. See, it could happen if you saw it happen once. It didn't say that. That's not, that's not what happened. These were repetitive events of the moving of the Spirit. See? <clears throat> did I uh, explain that right? Wonder if I did. That didn't seem like come out right. Uh, there was a pattern to see in which to evaluate whether or not that guy was demonic or Holy Ghost inspired. That's what I want to say. And then what I want to say, Jesus said that. If that repetitive, active, future tense happens again in the future, if you see that again repetitively, that person there is not going to trash me in an instant. Because you've got a pattern of evidence that's a moving of the Spirit. Not just one incident. It's kind of like, are you sure? Well, hmm. Mark, Matthew 4, they brought... To him, all sick people that had were taken with divers what? And here he lists them all, and you'll be running in these all the time in your ministry. Diseases, gnosis is sicknesses, torments. That means the people were being tortured. <coughs> Basanos means to be tortured. And what's the most frequent thing people are tortured with that are sick? Pain. Pain is huge in America. We have actually we have actual medical clinics all over the country for chronic pain and treatment of chronic pain, and it's like being tortured. Yeah. Uh, possessed with devils, we've gone over that several times. Diamond needs a mind. It means to be under the control of a spirit to a certain degree. He said some of them were lunatics. Seleniazomai means to be mentally ill or moonstruck is what it means in Greek. In ancient times, when the full moon came out, people believed that affected uh, sick people's minds. So they called them moonstruck. They were moonstruck. It was a term we would use for, I would use different terms for mental illness. Bipolar, you'd give different names for it. But they just said, hey, there, it'd be a slang term like we use, crazy. So to speak, a lunatic. There would be a catch-all term. Seleniazomai, a lunatic. Palsy, paralyticus is a spinal cord injury, and he healed them. Okay. How did he heal them? How does that work? If you'll see with your eyes and hear with your ears, 
understand with your mind You'll be converted and then you get healed Follow the yellow brick road When evening came they brought many that were possessed with devils diamond needs my and he cast out the spirits with his word and healed all that were sick Why Isaiah 53 He quotes it here in Matthew that it might be fulfilled broken spoken by Sias the prophet saying he took our asthenia our weaknesses he bear our gnosis sicknesses Section five Let's take a look at some uh, Illnesses that are rooted in the spirit. Okay, so you see the difference between them you got to have discerning of spirits Which Jesus had at running at maximum capacity Matthew 15 and mark 7 a woman of Canaan came out of Syria. She was Crowd Godzo means to yell exceptionally loud. She said, Have mercy upon me, O Lord, son of David. My little daughter's grievously vexed. She was de demonized. She has a devil. Jesus did not answer her. And the disciples came to Jesus, said, Get rid of this woman. She's got a big mouth. All right, guys, don't raise your hands, but ladies, let me talk to you for a minute. <clears throat> Men have this disease in their soul. It's called machismo. And the devil, I think, puts it in there when they're kids. It's kind of developed on the playground in grade school or first grade. It's machismo. It's this masculine thing. And it's really, wow, it's very painful. Because it distorts how you think and how you feel about yourself and others. Ask any police officer about machismo. They see people with it all the time that's running a muck on it. But machismo, ladies, if you learn how to manage machismo, wives, I'm letting out some secrets here. If you know how to manage your husband's machismo, you can get him to do anything. Anything. Unless you're a husband and you're like super smart, then it doesn't work. Like Rick, for example, I saw him. He's, he's real smart. It won't work on him. But for the rest of us, ladies, if you can learn to manage your husband's machismo, you know when to feed it and when to starve it a little. If you learn how to manage that, you got your slave at home. <laughs> yeah. Got a slave. Yes, sir. Well, one thing machismo doesn't like is a woman with a big mouth. Oh, I'm telling you, that's like putting kryptonite near Superman. He just drops. As soon as that yap starts going, ladies, again, this is all off the record. And I'll, if anybody asks me about it, I'll deny I said it. It's this thing here. Triggers machismo. It doesn't Rick. He's fine. It triggers machismo like you wouldn't believe and then you're gonna have hell to pay Because the machismo is a tremendous adapter It adapts to its environment incredibly it learns to hear the yapping from the wife and it suddenly disappears and The man cannot hear the woman talking It is stone silence that's the machismo. I don't have to listen to that. And the thing shuts down. It's miraculous. They can't hear you. I'm not even kidding. And the wives notice it too because they'll say, Did you hear me? That's the exact quote of every wife in America. Did you? I, I just said, Do I need to repeat myself? See, you're mismanaging machismo, ladies. Cut down the yicky yak. And again, this is free. I'm charging you nothing. <laughs> Saving marriages left and right here. That's what we do. <laughs> Jesus said not a word. The disciples, hearing the 
the machismo flares up in the 12 kooks and they go to Jesus and get rid of her That's what machismo does it cuts it off silences it. It gets rid of it If it can't physically get rid of it If they physically get rid of it, then you're on you're on a 2020 episode or something like that But if it's a regular marriage you can tune it out and it, They're still there, but you got rid of it. Well, they want this woman out the door they don't want to hear this anymore. So Jesus says, okay, let me handle it. He walks over to the lady yelling. She settles down. He says, I'm not supposed to heal the Gentiles right now. I've been healed. I've been sent to Israel, he says. And the woman, not taking no for an answer, worshiping. Oh, that's a red flag for us. Lord, help me. That's another red flag. Oh, what's she doing there? Gosh, she's giving the good Lord a good beating because she's hitting him in every soft spot he has. She's hitting him with how he's built. See, the Son of God is built to receive worship from everything and everybody. He's built that way. He's got a soft spot. He can't help himself. He wants to help you so bad. She hits him in a second soft spot. Powerful. Why? Why is she doing that? Love is pushing this woman past the church people and the 12 kooks into a miracle from God. Hitting the Lord right in his soft spot. Boom! Right in the belly. Help me, Lord. I'm worshiping you. Oh, what a way to approach God. Goodness sakes. The Jews don't even know how to do it. It's a Syrian lady here is teaching everybody how to do it. Aren't you seeing that? Oh, this is clear. She said, wait a minute, the Lord says, this is all for the children's bread. Deliverance is for the children's bread. Yeah. And it, as it is today, it's for Christians. And she says, well, uh, I'm not supposed to throw, ballow the crumbs from the table of the children's bread to the canary and the puppies. And she says, that's true, Lord, but even the puppies eat the crumbs from their master's table. Bang, she wins it. Don't you see how she got it? She was hitting the Lord in a soft spot. Oh, he's got a soft spot. Thank God for a soft spot. Help me, Lord. That is a soft spot. That's where the miracles are. Help me, Lord. Help me. He stops. You've got him. Got him there. You throw in the worship. Oh, the devil's trembling. He's shaking in his boots now. He knows the formula. He never uses it, but he knows the formula. He hears you use it. He starts panicking. You letting out some worship? Oh, he's getting worried. You hit him right in the bread basket there. Oh, help me, Lord. The devil's going to take another beating. He's going to take it tonight, too. When did you see that? She won her case. Woman, great is your faith. Hey, there you go. What's faith built with? Asking a prayer you know God wants to answer. Huh? Yeah. Lord, I need a limousine and two mansions. No, that's not a prayer that God wants to answer. Lord, help me. That is where you got him. Now you're right on him. See? You're asking a Prayer request according to his will if We ask anything according to his will. We know he hears us If we know he hears us, we know we have the petitions we desire of him See? Mansions and glory and Thousand dollar suits that wasn't on my his bucket list for me. Lord help me. That's on his bucket list Mix that in with some worship woman great is your faith What was the third ingredient? Perseverance. There it was. Stirring up miracles. Stirring up a miracle. Throwing some worship. Throw in a prayer, God, you know he, he can't say no to. Throw that one in, you got him. And then you keep stirring, no matter how many people and relatives and friends and co workers around you say, Don't do it anymore.
It's a miracle Great is your faith You get what you want Her daughter was made whole from that very hour when she came home She found the devil gone out of her daughter and her daughter Balo thrown on the bed The devil will throw you when he leaves. That's okay. You get back up. You're fine Luke 13 you read this a thousand times. He was teaching in the synagogue. There's the woman with the spirit of infirmity. She had it 18 years. 19 years ago, she didn't have it. She was all bent over. Sunkukto means to stoop, be stooped forward. She couldn't stand up anymore. He said, woman, Apoluo, you are completely released from your infirmity. He laid his hands on her, and she was made straight. Great. Here's a picture of a patient with kyphosis. Beginning stages and severe stage He's bent forward Here's a patient with scoliosis with the s in the back Here's a patient with rheumatoid arthritis where the joints morph okay? All these diseases are caused by demons spirits of infirmity Cause all these diseases. So if you're praying and praying praying for healing Probability is they're not going to get healed they don't need a healing, they need deliverance. I'm trying to point out the difference between the two. Jesus said to the pastor of the church, Should not this woman who's been bound by Satan, okay, it's a spiritual root, shouldn't she be loosed on the Sabbath day? What happened there? <clears throat> if you start ministering with the full gospel, all of it, baptism of the Holy Ghost. Gifts of the Spirit, deliverance, healing, repentance, complete repentance, holiness, sanctification. If you if you preach these hardcore messages, the church is going to turn on you, and they're going to throw you out the door. And you have to be ready to receive that and expect that, and know that God has something else for you after the church rejects you. Okay? Religious people were the number one persecutors of Christ and Paul. There's always church people that don't like you. Sinners either love you or they don't even care. So they just walk away from you. Luke 9. Behold, there was a man crying. You've read this several times. Teacher, I beg you, look on my son. He's my only child. <clears throat> a spirit takes him. He suddenly cries out. Okay, so we know this demon would quickly attack him, bang, and he would yell when he got hit. He'd scream, Kradzo, yell. And it tears him, Sparasso, he has, has a seizure, he foams at the mouth, it bruises him, Centribo shatters him, he never departs from him. The demon takes him someplace. Uh, Arnie was telling me a story just tonight about some spirit picked a guy up Somewhere at home or work or something and threw him through him down some stairs or down a hall or something I forgot exactly what he told me But this spirit literally physically picked this guy up and threw him happens all the time in the voodoo and different witchcraft scenarios demons can actually pick you up and frisbee you, Or they can move body parts uh, if you ever sit around talking to a drug addict for Period of time they relax. You'll notice that they have strange fidgety movements all the time. And they're moving their head. They, their eyes are going back and forth on them. They're twitching over here. They're looking over there. They're adjusting their seat there. This foot never stops going. They're going. You ever seen that? That's that's the demons inside the person running that constant anxiety motor. The, the demons can move your body around. Yeah, particularly in witchcraft. He foams, he gnashes, he grinds his teeth, he's wasting away, he's anorexic. I talked to your disciples, they could not cast him out, it says. Jesus said, faithless generation. What's he talking about there? Well, the root of almost everything is having faith, but mixing unbelief with it. Which then ruins your faith. If you mix unbelief and doubt in with your faith... A little leaven leavens a whole lump, and you lost your miracle. So the disciples started doubting and questioning. They couldn't get the demon out of the kid. And Jesus said, well, bring him to me then, and I'll do it. When the demon saw Jesus, he pitched a fit, says here. 
toward the kid. He pipto, he fell forward on the ground. He does a Peter Pan right in front of him. Bang, he lands there. Coolio, he's wallowing around in a circular motion, having a seizure, pitching a fit, making a big scene. Jesus looks over to the dad. He says, how long has this been going on? Pidiophan means an infant. When he was little, he was having seizures. Can you imagine it? The demons got the kid as a baby. And it throws him into the fire, trying to destroy him and in the water. If you can do anything, have compassion on us. Well, the disciples had mixed doubt in with their faith. Couldn't get the demon out. And the dads they had faith. He brought the kid, but he had doubt mixed in as well. So the deliverance was botched on two ends. Okay? Because the child wasn't expected to have any faith. <clears throat> No, the father has authority over the children. The mother has authority over the children. The mother and dad are supposed to take care of the children. The children can't do what the mother and dad can do. So the dad did the right thing. He brought the child, but he had faith to bring him. But he was, oh God, is this going to be another failed deliverance? So he's, he's mixing in a little bit of doubt. And then he gets there, and then the disciples start doubting. Hmm, this thing should have come out ten minutes ago. I wonder what that is. The disciples, the Bible says the scribes were arguing with them. So the scribes are butting in. They're trying to tell them how to do it. Oh, you're supposed to talk to the demons first. No, no, you're not supposed to talk to them. Now you're supposed to start with the generational curses. And they're having this big debate. So whenever you have a big debate over spiritual things, what happens? Faith picks up doubt. See? Unity, there's no doubt. But once there's disunity, there's confusion, doubt, unbelief. So the deliverance was botched. Okay? If you have anything you can do for us, once again, he's doubting. Jesus said, if you can fix your doubt and just totally believe, if you can keep your faith and remove the doubt, anything can happen. The father of the child, Pideon, is a toddler. So now we know the kid's not an infant anymore when it started, so he's little. So this has been going on, you know, not like the woman with the spirit of infirmity, but, you know, probably several years. He probably sixth grader, fifth grader, something like that, third grader. Toddler, little kid. He said, Lord, help me unbelief. And the guy just prayed the prayer of the ages. What a great prayer to pray. That's a prayer that hits the Lord right in the bread basket. That's one he's got to answer. He knows it. He's going to answer it. It's great to pray prayers when you know you got the Lord over the barrel. It's the, it's the wishy-washy ones that are a problem. The self-centered ones, the self-absorbed ones, the, the ego ones. That's for that's that's next week's Bible study. Here he cries out, Lord, help my unbelief. That's a prayer that's always answered. And so the dumb and deaf spirit, this patient had hearing and speech deficits, it says in the Greek. I command you or charge you or order you a patasso, come out and do not enter in into him anymore okay whenever you do a deliverance on an adult you cannot say that <clears throat> because adults have free will so I can't say to you demons come out of there and put on a tutu and fly to Jupiter and when you get there sit on a long pole and rotate yourself <laughs> would I like to do that I would love to do that I just revealed one of my deep inner secrets. I'd like to take every demon to Jupiter and find a long pole and put it on the top and then run it down. But a child, that's another story. You can tell because the children don't have free will. They don't understand the consequences of 
moral and immoral behavior So when you cast a demon out of a kid you can bind that spirit and tell him never to come back if they leave an adult you know they're going to come back the, the adult then must renew their mind change their behavior and repent so the demon can't get back in I should have gotten an amen on that but this is a backslidden group and <laughs> that's fine used to have them backsliders here <laughs> When a demon comes out of you, you are to change your life and your attitude. You are now to study the Word of God. You are to renew your mind on the Word of God. You are to change, 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 change. My daughter got divorced because my son-in-law would not change. Change, change, change. Okay. Kids, are not, they do not have those requirements. Okay. They came, Jesus, the disciples came to Jesus and said, why couldn't we cast them out? He said, because of, you had faith. Notice he didn't say you didn't have any faith. They had faith because they were trying, correct? By definition, they had faith, but the mix got in. See, once that mix gets in, oh man, it kills all of us. We're all in the same boat. Happened to me a million times over the years. I believed something and then I started having some doubts. And then the thing crashed on me. And it crashed on them. And then he says, uh, this kind of spirit, a genos, it means generational. So apparently this spirit had come down from the generations, got the kid either in the womb or as an infant, and it was some powerful superpower demon. We see that all the time here. If you come from a family with a lot of heavy, hardcore, nasty, filthy sinners in it, they're going to attract huge demons, powerful demons, and they're going to come down the tree looking for you. If they get a shot at you, they're going to take you. And that's what happened. So you need to fast and get that unbelief and doubt out of there so you can get some of these prayers answered you're looking for. <laughs> Fasting doesn't make God, you know, it's not like putting him in a full Nelson or you got his arm behind him like the cops do, you know, like put, put your arm down. Ever seen those guys on the cop show? I can't figure one of them out. It make any sense. Five, six cops around you, they're all in a bad mood. When you're surrounded by five cops in a bad mood, you need to recognize When you're told to put your hands back in, you don't start swinging <laughs> See it's not the demons that are your problem It's it's your unbelief that's killing you if you can believe all things are possible to him that believes If you have faith and not doubt, you shall not only do that what is done to the fig tree, but if you say to this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believing, you shall receive. Okay? But doubt creeps in and ruins the power. A lot of people nowadays won't even drink tap water anymore. You know that? No. Yep. People see tap water as poison. Why? Because there's little things in there that aren't good for you. See? If you have a glass of faith and you put a drop of strychnine in there, that whole drink is now shot. <coughs> All right. These powerful demons that kid has cause these illnesses here. Okay? Whenever you're going to work with these kind of people, you have to get the family on board with you because these demons, man, they don't come out easy. I have as much trouble with these demons as everybody else does. 
any ch kid that has these type of spirits, I always go after the parents and get them on board. So we've got a unified front attacking these powerful demons. Luke 11. One day Jesus was casting out a devil, Daimonian demon, and it, Altas, he was kafos, dumb, he had a speech impediment. Notice here that the demon had a speech impediment. When the devil or demon was gone out, the dumb man spoke and the people were thamazo in a state of shock. What's the lesson here? The spirit always gives you the symptoms they have. So if, if the person's got anger issues, you don't need to sit there for an hour and going over names. What's your name, demon? Cosmito, Magneto, Balido, Vafalito. Stop it. It's an anger spirit. That's the symptom. Just go with that. You'll be fine. A lust spirit. That's what it is. Okay. Yeah, you don't like people. Well, that's an easy demon to find. You have some man hater or woman hater, something in there that hates other people. You don't have any compassion for anybody. You don't care that much. People drive you nuts. They get on your nerves. Well, that's the spirit that has to come out. You got cancer? Duh, it's the spirit of cancer. Come on. This isn't that hard to figure out. People make it hard, but it isn't. The demon got in the guy's brain, in his speech center of his brain, which is right over here, sides. So, the, the guy had a speech impediment. The speech demon had a speech impediment. He got into the man's brain. The man then developed a speech impediment. The spirit was removed. The man started talking normal. Everybody's amazed. Easy. So you were showing about an inch. What's would you say about inch preach? The sign's blind. Do you believe when I pray for you right now, you'll see right now? Because Jesus is your healer? Okay. You blind devil come out in the name of Jesus Christ right now. Recreate. Recreate. Don't let her fall out. Recreate. Blind eye, I command you, see in Jesus' name. Cover up your right eye, darling. Keep it covered real good. You ready to see? You ready to see? Yeah. I can see. I can see. I can see. Now let me show you. Cover up your right eye. Cover it up good. How many fingers I got? <laughs> Somebody ought to give God a praise. Uh, notice he said, you blind devil. Right. You happen to hear him say that? What was he saying there? There was some spirit in that girl's head causing that blindness. And he said for her eye to ball to restore, apparently the demon had caused some eye damage. So sometimes you're running into two things, physical damage caused by the spirit. So you got to get the spirit out for the person to recover and be healed, right? And what was even more shocking was the people sitting around that girl that saw her got healed sat there like they were 
etched in stone. <laughs> How in the heck? Church people are crazy. All right, many times you're going to have to get people healed emotionally first before they get physically healed. We see that all the time around here. <coughs> Matthew 9, a spinal cord injury case. They brought the guy down through the roof. He had palsy. <coughs> Paralyticus is a spinal cord injury. Jesus said, son, be of good cheer. Your sins are a fiamy released from you. So apparently, I don't know what happened, but my guess is this kid had all kinds of, you know, self-hatred, regrets, whatever it was, however the accident happened, wishing he had never been born, uh, can't even go to the bathroom anymore, living in living a life of pure hell, whatever he was going through. He was just emotionally, you know, crushed, which is common. So Jesus focused on that first and uh, then explained which is easier to forgive sins or to heal. And in God's eyes, there's none. Back then, it was to heal was easier. Nowadays, it's to forgive sins is easier in our society. We think that's easier. Back then, it was to heal, not to get forgiven. You know, what goes around comes around. And then Jesus explains that he had exousia, authority on earth to forgive sins. He then heals the, heals the boy, and he goes home. It'll happen all the time in your ministry. You'll have to deal with that many times over the years. Emotional issues can block your healing and can block a deliverance. Okay, here's Mark chapter 8. Uh, there were all kinds of medical healings that had nothing to do with demons. Here's one of them. He takes this guy by the hand, leads him out of town. He spits in his eyes. That's what it says. And he puts his hands on him. And they asked him if he sees, tastes anything. He says. Then he says, he looks up and he says, I see men like trees walking. Trees don't walk, they blow in the breeze, and it kind of gives you that blurry type. He put his hands on him again, and he made him look up in the air this time. And he was restored and saw everything clearly. What's, what's he telling us there? I'm not sure, but listen, if you prayed for somebody once, yeah. Go ahead and pray again if you need to. Don't worry about it. Keep going. Because something could have blocked the first prayer that's not blocking the second one. Maybe there was doubt on the first prayer and then that was cleared up and then he's ready to go or she on the second prayer or the third or fifth or what have you. There, thereabouts somehow. It works that way sometimes. Everything doesn't instantly happen. <clears throat> Some people that do deliverance are uh, they, a lot of them have a lot of weird deceptions. Here's one of them. Um, it's kind of like the word of faith blabbing. All right. You walk up to the person. Ah, you've got demons. Okay, devil, come out. Go. All right, he's gone. He's gone. He's out. Yeah, but I don't feel any different. That's okay. It's gone. Yeah, but I still hate everybody, including you. I like to tell you, don't. That's fine. It's gone. It's, the word of faith, mumbo jumbo, doesn't work with demons. The word of faith stuff's really damaging and it hurts people very bad. Oh, oh you're healed. You were healed at Calvary. You're healed two thousand years ago. Um, still dragging my foot. Nope, you're healed. You're fine. <laughs> People then start to look at you like you've lost your mind. <laughs> then the person swallows word of faith crap and goes to work. I got healed last night at a rally. Oh, you did? <laughs> who healed you? Jesus. Well, thank you. Now I know who to avoid. I think I'll go find Buddha. Come on, folks. Use a little common sense, please. Please stop that. None of that is in the Bible, is it? Can you name me one, please?
Just one. Give them to me. Nobody has one? Eric, you got one? Eric, I did. <laughs> Darn Eric. Look, if there, there's just no precedent for that in the Bible. Now, there is there is precedent precedent for casting demons out quicker. That's that's in the Bible, absolutely, and that it, that depends on your faith and your anointing and you know what kind of dunamis power. You, each person has different levels of firepower. Okay. So some things happen quicker with this person than that one, with this minister than that one. That's true. Okay, that's absolutely right. A Wigglesworth never had any problems casting out demons. It was get out, bark, and he bark at them. Boom, they were gone. They ran for the hills. Okay, and that's happened to me several times, and other times it hasn't. It's been a longer process. So. Whatever you do, don't get discouraged or burned out or down in the dumps because you're not Superman. There, there, most people are not Superman. Okay, so most of us got to learn as we go. Okay? And so if you just bark at something, sometimes it's not going to happen. So you got to find out what the reason of it is. Look for the reason. Use your discernment. Figure it out. Help the person. Discover the blockage Something's blocking it. It's not God blocking it. He wants to heal everybody. It's something on our end So you got to figure out what that is Did you ever read the Wigglesworth books yes. he had a half a dozen cases or more of exactly what I just said Wigglesworth said just repent of it Stop quit that stop they weren't healed until they did it Okay, so it happens. Different things block it. Whatever it is, just fix it. If you see men as trees walking, you know, take another shot at it. You know, pray again. Okay, work work on something else. And here in the in the Bible, you can see the two blind men. There was no mention of demons. Bartimaeus, blind Bartimaeus, the guy that was blind from birth. Uh, the centurion's son, the woman with the issue of blood, no mention whatsoever of demons. Here's five more, resurrection of the boy that was dead, the widow of Nain. Remember that one? The resurrection of Lazarus. That's that ring a bell? There was no mention of demons there at all. Brother Jarius' daughter was resurrected. There was no mention of, of spirits or anything. The boy on the cot, there was no demons there. The guy at the pool of Bethesda, there wasn't one mention. Okay, so not everything is demons. Not everything is demons. Okay. Oops. All right. Let's take a vote. Finish this next month at this next month's seminar or stop here. And do something different next month. All right. So it's getting late. Shall we finish this next at next month's seminar? Let's take a vote. Yes, yes on next month for the rest of this. One, two, three, four. Okay. The the nose have it. All right, any questions about uh, the ministry of healing here? Uh, Kelly, can she hear me? Is she in there? Yes. Uh, Corina, can you, can you go to the last uh, video on the, on the presentation, the last one? Just go down there. I guess I could do it. <sighs> yeah, run it down to the end. You know, take too long that way. Any questions on healing? Yes, ma'am.
Go ahead. Okay. Um, what kind of sins lead to congenital defects, things like being born deaf or blind and things like that? Oh, okay. Ben, I, I tell you what, I have no idea. <clears throat> I have no idea. Congenital demons, they're, they're vicious. They attack the kid in the womb. They give them physical illnesses. They give them mental illnesses. And if you go up the family tree, generally speaking, in almost every case I've worked with over the years, there's always been somebody up that tree involved in witchcraft. Or a false religion like Mormonism or masonry or something like that there's always something in the family tree really bad uh, something like that it wasn't like regular sinning in, in my experience it's something bad really bad any other questions yeah, sir. Um, how do you know when uh, when pain or something like pain or blindness is demonic or medical? Well, how do you know whether an illness is demonic or medical? How do you know that? Okay. Normally, it's taken as a medical condition, nine times out of ten. So then the person runs through a gauntlet of medical treatment modalities. This doctor, that doctor, this doctor, this treatment, that treatment, this treatment, that medication, this medication, that medication. And then if at the end of all that, if they're not cured, it's normally demonic. It's usually demonic. <laughs> Father <laughs> Yeah. Now that's how you're supposed to react when you see a healing like that. Not like that blind deal where you sit down. Oh, okay. Jeez, this is great. Oh, Peter Piper pizza's closing. Okay, yeah. okay those those are lukewarm, churched out Christians that are couldn't pray their way out of a wet paper bag. That those kind of people are just pathetic. Those are the this is the group here. You want to go see every week. Yeah. <laughs> they're worshipers, they're praisers, they're ready to go. Anything the Holy Ghost does, they're on top of it. They're enthusiastic. See, childlike faith is the key to miracles. It's childlike faith that get them. Yeah. I put this on my Facebook page a couple days ago. When we were in Oceanside, this 50-something-year-old woman comes up to me, and she says, I got fibromyalgia real bad. So where does it hurt at? Oh, my neck and my shoulders and my knees are killing me and this and that. I said, uh, well, are you married? She says, yeah. I said, I said uh, uh, how many times have you been married? One time it was 30-something years, almost 40 years you married. And he was verbally abusive and he was a serial cheater. Like my son-in-law was to my daughter. He cheated on her all the time. And, hey, 
you stay in a, uh, a bad marriage the marriage sucks but you stay in there because you've got kids okay that happens a lot of time mostly on the women but sometimes on men they stay in there they stay in hang in there they take a beating and the kids are gone and later on in life other circumstances keep them pinned in that marriage finances uh, <coughs> not having a decent career different kinds of things there's all kinds of different reasons people stay together love is rarely it and this woman had stayed there taken a beating for decades and she had bad feelings about the guy duh who wouldn't she's just a regular normal person who wouldn't have bad feelings about somebody that's been abusing you for years duh you're you're just a regular human you're not a sick person i said you know what we need to do uh, is your husband still alive? She said, yeah. I said, well, let's, let's just pray for him and ask God to bless him. And then you just repent of having bad feelings about him. And let's use Matthew 5.44 on him and let's pray, pray over that. And let's bless him. Let's turn your husband over to the Lord tonight. And let's just do that. And she did. I led her in this 45-second prayer, right? Forgiven the rotten husband, blessing him, asking God to have mercy on him. I asked God to forgive her for having bad feelings against him. I said, okay, let's pray then. So I grabbed her shoulders, be healed. I grabbed her arms. I started to fan them like that. The third, the fourth one, click, it happened. Loose as a goose. She's walking around. She's in a state of shock. I come back a couple minutes later. I don't know how long it was. I said, how is your pain? What about your neck? Gone. Everything's great. How about your shoulders? Oh, perfect. No pain. What about your knees? She paused. As soon as somebody pauses on you, you know there's something else there. Benefits. Benefits of a classical education. <laughs> I said, okay, what about your husband? Well, I guess I do have some. You guess? No, I think you do. I went through the whole thing again on the husband, the rotten husband. Did it? Grabbed her knees, boom, completely healed. It wasn't, she didn't see trees walking, she saw her husband walking there. I see my husband walking through there. Ugh. Anybody here ever had a bad husband? Don't raise your hand. Boy, it's tough having a bad husband. I know, because I, I, I was a bad husband. I know how bad husbands are. So sometimes you got trees there, you had to go back a second time. Clear out some more of them trees. So I was just doing a little landscaping in her soul. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What I was doing. And God had mercy on her. She just couldn't believe it. Amen. She was completely healed. Yeah. The Naley sat next to her that came with her. Another interesting story. She was much younger. She looked like she was in her early 40s. I noticed her getting prayed for a couple other times, and every time somebody would put their hand on her pray for her, she would start torquing like that, you know, kind of, whoa, whoa. What's that? Kundalini. Okay. So when I got a shot at her, which was after the fibro lady, I said, have you ever been to a prophetic seminar or a church? And have you ever gone through a prayer tunnel? Oh, I've been through several of those. I said, well, you, you picked up kundalini spirits from that prayer tunnel. That's what's causing your body to jerk. I said, we're not going to be able to get those out of there unless you recognize and turn on them. She goes, well, I don't want them in there. I want them out. I said, you do? <laughs> okay. Well, that's it then, you know. She wanted them out. Yeah, it was it was wild. I started barking at them, 
She flew up in the air, flew on the ground, started having a giant seizure. Don't, don't you see what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to say there's trees walking in people's lives, in their souls, and sometimes you have to kind of find out what it is once in a while to get a little clarity, and that's all. You're not judging them, you're just helping find the trees, is all I was doing. So what if I would have been like a regular church person? I would have just said, what, what's wrong with you? Oh, I need prayer. Okay, let's pray. You know, now you see why there's so many failures in prayer because you don't get any information about what's going on and you don't get the person to repent or change of anything see I could have been yelling at her fibromyalgia till one o'clock in the morning I didn't get home till 12 30 that night had I started yelling at her fibromyalgia I'd been there at one o'clock in the morning but by finding out that it was soul issue toward the cheating husband then I was as smooth as the country song <laughs> my cheating man <laughs> I nailed it <laughs> see all you're doing is trying to help some people it's not a you're a big deal you're just you treat them as a regular person like yourself you see them as a regular person like you see yourself then you're on equal ground then you're fine Right? You don't talk down to them, but you have to be firm. You, you can't be wishy-washy with people. You got to be firm, because the devil he's very firm. He's nasty, firm. Okay. All right. Let's let's watch your destiny. This is your destiny tonight, and here you are. We'll turn the lights out for this one. Flood lights, and then we'll. Como eu o seguraria. 
and he will do something. You will study how will. Something has been done. How could they see the fake thing? power. Thank you, Jesus, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name. Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, you're the Syrian woman tonight. She worshiped him. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. Very glory, Lord. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory. Oh. Oh. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, I give you praise. I give you praise tonight, Lord. Oh, I give you praise. Give you praise, Lord. Give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Well, glory. Well, glory. Thank you for your blood, Lord. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, Lord. If you need to be healed, come on up here to the front right now. You need to be healed. Come on up. Thank you, Jesus. Stand right here and face me now. Stand right here. Come on up in front. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have to leave, God bless you as you go. The donation buckets are on the doors. The bookstore is going to be open for a little while so you can... Get that atonement healing book and Christ the healer. God love you. Come forward if you need to be healed. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your healing power. Father God, right now I come against all doubt, all unbelief in my mind and in my soul. I come against it right this second. Come on, say it. Pray it with me. Come on. I come against this unbelief in my mind and my heart. I come against unbelief and doubt in my soul. I bind this power. In the name of the Son of the living God, I bind this wickedness. The ministry team, come on forward if you would. Come on out. Just repent of any unbelief and doubt. If you can believe, all things are possible to those who believe. Just repent of it right now. I need healing, Lord. I've been doubting. I've had doubts. I've had unbelief. I'm asking you right now to forgive me for it. Forgive me for it. I'm worshiping you, Lord. I'm worshiping you. I'm repenting of my unbelief and my doubt. 
Mom, were you like that lady in Oceanside? Did you have a bad spouse, rotten wife, a stinking husband? Did they wound you and hurt you over the years? Would you be willing to do what she did? Just forgive him and pray for him and ask God to forgive him and ask God to bless him. Would you do that? Would you be willing to release that person from your soul? Why don't you do it right now? Let's do it. I release that person from my soul right now that wounded me, that molested me, that beat me, that lied to me, that stole from me, that cheated on me. I forgive them right now. Every bad person I've ever known that hurt me. I repent of it right this second in the name of Jesus. I just repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, would you be willing to repent of hating yourself and constantly mulling over your regrets and your mistakes? Would you be willing to do that? Would you be willing to do that? Yes. 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 Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Would you be willing to do that? Just do it right now. Father God, I'm asking you to forgive me for not forgiving myself. For not forgiving myself. Come on. I said for not forgiving myself. Come out. Unbelief and self-hatred. Come out now. Come on. Get out of there. Unbelief and doubt. Come out of me. Come on. If you got a bad husband or a bad wife, you're going to release them from your soul. Come on. Let's just do it. Let's do it real quickly. Let's just forgive them real quickly. Whoa. There we go. Just forgive them real quickly. Forgive them real quickly now. Come on. Just forgive them quickly. Do you hear me? Forgive them quickly. I forgive myself quickly. I repent of hating myself. I repent of hating myself. I repent of mulling over all my regrets. My constant regrets. I repent of it right this second. I repent of it right now. Constant regrets. Blaming myself. Come on. Just repent of it right this second. Constant regrets. Mulling over my failures. I repent of it right now in the name of Jesus. Spirit of infirmity, I bind your power. I command you to come out of me. I command you to come out of me, I said. Go! There he is. There he comes. There he is. Come out right now. Come out right now. Go now. Go now. Just repent of it. Just repent of it. Come on. Just do it. Just repent of it. Thank you, Jesus. Just repent of it. Come on, say it. I repent of it. I'm repenting of this in the name of Jesus. Just say it. Come on. Spirit of fear, I bind your power. Now come out right now. Go. Spirit of fear, come out right now. Come out right now. Come out. Unbelief and doubt. Come out of there. Get out of the head. Come out right now. Go quicker. Come out right now. Go. Get out of the head right now. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out of there. Let's go. Come out. Regrets. <laughs> Doubt and unbelief. Go. Go, I said. Go. 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 Come out. Come out. Generational curses. Come out. Witchcraft. Come out. Sorcery. Come out. Buddha. Come out. False religion. Come out. Go. Come out. Anger and lust. Go. Come out. Go. Come out. Quickly. Come out right now. Quickly. Quickly. Get him out of there. Come on. Let's do it. Let's do it right now. Come on. Come on. Let's do it. Let's do it now. Go. Come out right now. Let's go right now. Let's do it right now. What's wrong with you? I'm a lot of anxiety. Let me just start. Come on. Give me that start. Kid. Kid. Man, who abused you? Who abused you? Come on. I don't know. I don't know. Who hurt you? I think it was just. Were your parents divorced? No. What happened? Dad, that. The drunk dad that would get drunk. And do what to you? Nothing to me, but I seen it happen to my. I heard it happen to my sister. Did he molest him or beat him? Yes. What was his name? Alex. Alex, did you hate him when you were younger? He was molested. Yeah, he got molested. Okay, yeah. so the spirit got into him 
and he's molested. And he molested too, right? Yes. His name was what? Alex. Alex. Okay, raise your hand. Is he still alive? Yeah, he's alive, but what gets me is I can't let go of that lust. All I want to do is look at porn and... Yeah, but that's not the that's not the main problem though. Did somebody disappoint you after your dad? My mom. What's she do to you? Abusive. Abusive how? Verbally. Physically, she would just whip us with anything, took her frustrations out on us. What's your name? Alex. You're Alex Jr.? Yeah. Okay, close your eyes. Close your eyes now. Are you, are you safe? I don't know. I, uh, I mean, I prayed with my buddy back there, but... You prayed back there? I prayed with my buddy at home today to get saved. Oh, you did? My buddy Renee. Okay. Now, this is usually an easy fix. You've got demons from your family tree. And you know where they came down already. Click, your dad, your dad got hit when he was a kid. But where at in the Bible does it say that you guys can heal? What? Where at in the Bible does it say that you guys are able to heal? Because I have this. Who's able to heal? When I was sitting down, I have this demon that's telling me, and I'm looking at you, and I'm like judging you, which I know I shouldn't, because I read the word of God, and he's and he's judging you like he don't look perfect. He's not. Who is he? He's right. Your your, your demons normally lie, but in this case, they were right. Yeah. Now, I can't heal a fly. I don't have any, I got nothing. And it's going to be up to me. Huh? It's going to be up to me and Jesus, right? Yeah, the Lord Jesus heals. But, uh, because you what gotta, is, what's going on there? That's demons coming out of that girl. Now, uh, what you have to do is turn your life over to the Lord, 100%. Yeah, because I keep finding myself, I know I have to. God's calling on me. And, uh, I can, so there's times where I feel on top of the world. I won't even look at another one. I won't want to look at one. And I know it's wrong, but then this morning, I relapsed, and I knew it was wrong. I went in the shower, and I just felt like crap. Yeah, I know. You're being tricked. Okay, just forget about that. Forget about all that. That's, that's not part of the problem. That's only a symptom. That's only a symptom. What about the anxiety? What is that no, that's a symptom. That's a fear demon. That you picked up from your dad. He had them too. Okay? Now raise your hands. Just do what I tell you. Okay? Close your eyes. Father God, I'm praying for Alex right now. And he's got evil spirits from his family tree. He's got sexual perversion demons and lust. He's got porn demons. He's got uh, anxiety from his family tree. He's got fear spirits that are right there. That one just jumped when I touched him. But the problem is he hasn't completely turned his life over to you. And he's ready to do it tonight. And he's going to do it. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I repent of my sins. I repent of my sins right now. Come out. I repent of my sins and I'm turning my life over to the Son of God and nobody can stop me. I'm turning my life over to Jesus and I'm repenting of my wickedness. And I want the power of these demons in my body broken at the count of three. One. Two, three, break. Take a big breath, breathe, blow. Keep blowing, keep blowing. Come out. Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me, Lord. Pray harder. Forgive me, Lord. Good, there you go. Help me, Lord. Keep going. Help me, Jesus. Keep going. Help me, Jesus. Thank you. Good. Very good. Keep going. Good. Thank you, Jesus. Help me. Good. Very good. Go. Keep going. Thank you, Jesus. Good. Thank you, Lord. 
Coach Homer. You know him? Coach Homer. You know that guy? Yes. Oh, that's the guy you introduced me to? Coach Homer. Come on, pray harder. Pray harder. You got to keep praying until the Holy Spirit touches you. Press your way in. Ready? Let's go. Dear Jesus, help me. Dear Lord Jesus, help me. Help me, Lord. God, forgive me. Good. Keep going. Keep going. Thank you, Jesus. Demon of lust, come out of my genitals. Come out of my body. Right now. Keep, keep good. Keep going. Come out of me right now. Leave my body. Leave my body. Leave my body. Come on. Go. Come out. Come out. Get out of my body right now. Come out. What are you thinking about? Still, I know, still got it, but I know it's leaving. I can feel it leaving. Okay, now. Still keeps doubting. Yeah, the, the demon's in your brain. He's in here. And he puts those thoughts in your mind. He's doing it. Your dad had the same thoughts. He did. Yeah. And he still it's, doubts. It's the same spirit. Okay? So what you got to do is just push your way in. Here, I'll, I'll do it for you. Spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, you're stealing my faith and you're causing me to doubt. I renounce you and I reject you and I come against you with the blood that Jesus shed. And I command you in the name of the Lord to loose your hold over my mind and come out in the name of Jesus. You see how I was praying? Yeah. Try it. Uh, I Try like it. My anxiety is in the way. No, that's a demon in the way. It's a fear demon. They usually hide in this area right here. That's where they normally are. Okay, push your way through it. Try hard. In the name of Jesus, I repent. I command the spirit to stop tormenting me. I command this cowardice to come out of me. I keep coughing. Come out. There he is. Come out right now. Come out right now. Go. Come out. There he comes. Come out. Keep coughing. Come out. Hold back. Come out right now. Go. Come out right now. Go. Come out. Come out right now. Go. There he goes. Come out. Come out there. Let's go. Go. Let's go. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. Go. Come out. Go. Come out. Go. Go. Go now. Hey, why don't you call me and come in for a counseling appointment? I need to go home and. No why don't you call point. me? And, uh, why don't, no, that's not going to work. Why don't you give me a call and come in for a free counseling appointment, okay? okay? Go out, go to my office there and get one of my cards. Tell my wife you want one of my cards. Or there's one out in the hall, okay? Give me a call. I'll be happy to see you. No charge. Because I feel like it still wants to attach, but I know it's going to take my strength. Just give me a call. I'll go, we'll go over a whole thing with you. I'll show you exactly what to do, okay? And where do you get this from? Where do you get this from? Get what from? Studying and studying? No, I got filled with the Holy Ghost and then I got it out of the Bible. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a Christian counselor. Go get one of my cards and give me a call. Come back in and see me. Because something keeps wanting me to talk to you. Yeah, I know. That's the real person. The real person wants to be healed. But here's you and here's them. And they're both in that body. God loves this person. He doesn't love those. True. You, will, you follow me? Yeah, I do. If you don't get these out, you're going to end up like your dad. Come out. Come out. Come out of there. Uh, you've spoken with me before. Um, I don't know if you've spoken with me before a while back. I know. Um, what about the thoughts in your head? They're, they keep creeping in. Okay, put your hand on your head. Now just get mad. Get out of my head and come out now. Get out of my head now. Good. Get mad. Come on. 
Get out of that body. Come out quicker. Come out of her body. Come out of her stomach right now. Come out of her stomach right now. Come out right now. Good. There it is. Take another yawn. They're starting to come out. Yawn them out. Go ahead. Take a yawn. Come out of there, I said. Quicker. Come out quicker. Quicker. Come out quicker. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up. Come out right now. Demon of fear. Get out of that body right now. Hurry up and come out right now. Get out of there. Go. Hurry up and go. Hurry up and go. There they are. Next one. Next one. Big yawn. They're starting to come out of me. They're coming out. They're coming out. Another one. Yawn. There they come. Come out, devil. Get out of my hand, I said. Get out. Go. Go. Get out. Right now. Get out. Amen. Go. Go. Get out of that body right now. Come out. Come out. Tell him to come out. Tell him. Tell him to get out of there. That demon right there. Tell him to come out. Witchcraft and sorcery. Come out. Evil. Come out. Evil. Come out. Evil. Hurry up. Come out of me. Get out of my body. Every ugly man that ever touched my body comes out now. Adultery, come out. Adultery, come out. Adultery. Oral sex, come out. Right now, come out. Come out. Come out. Get out. Hurry up. Go. Get out of my head. Come out of there right now. Come out. Hurry up. Hurry up. Sickness, come out of my body. Sickness and disease, come out of my body. Cancer, come out of my body. Cancer, come out. Leukemia, come out. Herpes, come out. Herpes, come out. Herpes, come out. Come out. VD, come out. Come out. Go now. Come out. VD, come out. Evil, come out. Evil. Evil. Come out. Evil. Evil. Iniquity, come out. Come out of my vagina right now, okay? Man, go, 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 go. Oral sex, come out of my mouth. Get out of there right now. Come out quicker. Stop distracting him. Stop distracting him. Come out of his head. Get out of that brain. Do it right now. Come out of there right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come out. Get out. Come out. Bad men, come out. 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 Hurry up. Go. Come out. Get out of that body right now. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. I command you. Satan, lose your hold. I command you. Say it. Say it. I command you, Satan. Lose your hold. Satan, lose your hold. Satan, I command you. Lose your hold. Come out. Spirit of fear, come out of there right now. Go. Come out of my stomach. Porn, come out of there. Chronic masturbation, go. Come out of there right now, you pervert. Satan, you pig, come out of that body right now. Go now. Go now, right now. Go right now. Go right now. Hurry up. Come out right now. Come out. I said, come out right now. Come out right now. Go. Get out of me right now. I command you. Unbelief and doubt. Hurry up. Come out. Unbelief and doubt. I curse you. Come out. Unbelief and doubt. Go. Get out of the body. Get out. Go. 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 
Keep coughing. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out now, now, quicker. Come out, devil. Come out, Satan. Satan, loose your hold. Hurry up. Satan, loose your hold. Loose your hold. Loose your hold, devil. Let me go, Satan. Let me go. Now, I command you. When you pray, don't whine. If you whine, nothing's going to happen. Take command. Satan, I loose you from my body and my life. Get out of my children. Come out of my parents. Go. Devil, go. Keep yawning. Bigger ones go. Bigger ones. Come out. Come out of there. Satan, come out of my husband right now. Say it. Come out of my husband right now. Get out of him. Say it. Come out in Jesus' name. Let my husband go. <coughs> come out of that body right this second. You get out of my body right this second. Come out of there, you snake. There he is. Snake's coming up right now. There he is. It's a snake. It's a snake. There he is. Get out of there, you pervert. You pervert, come out right now. Come on, ladies. Let's get all them bad men out of your body. Every ugly man that ever touched my body comes out tonight. All of them. Every one of them. Every one. Who hurt you? Who is he? My, my ex husband. What's his name? Keith. What do you do to him? Abuse, adultery. <laughs> Like that Lies, lady in Ocean Side. Yeah. Keith. Keith. Ready? Yes. Stand over here. Close your eyes. Father God, I release Keith from my soul right now. I let him go. And I forgive him. Come out, you snake. I release him from my soul. Good. I let him go. Come out now, Keith. You cheated. You lied to me. You cheated on me. You slept with other women. I release Keith, my husband. I let ex husband go. Come on. Come on. Go. Keith. Come on. Let him go. Just forgive him. I forgive him. And I release him. Come out there, you witch. Get out of that body, you snake. Every transfer every, spirit from every woman you every slept with that came into me. It came into me. I forgive those women. I forgive those women. And I let him go right I now. I release him keys to Jesus. I let him go. Right now. Come out of there, you snake. Come out, you snake. Go now, you snake. Go now. Go now. I repent of hating him. I repent of having bad feelings in my soul. I repent of it, Lord. I'm sorry I did that. Sorry I did that. Come out. Sorry I did that. Come out. Come out. Come out. What? Here, grab that thing there. Start that. What happened to you? Um, well, I had, a, I had an accident a few years ago. Get out, get out. It's on. Testing one, can you hear me? It's on. What's your name, ma'am? My name's Tanya. I well, live here in Phoenix. Um, you live in Phoenix? Why'd you come here tonight? I, I came here tonight to find out more about uh, your spiritual healing seminar. And, uh, come out of there, all of them. All of them come out of there. All of them. I want them all out, not part of them. You have the anointing, sir. Go ahead and use it. You got the fire of God on you right now, son. Go ahead. Let's take it. Take it. What have? What she say? What'd you say? Um, I had scoliosis. That I didn't know about it. How long you had it? Well, I don't know how long I had it, but I found out about it because I took X-rays of my back after a fire accident. And what so year I've was been that? like that for about five years. Or something. Five years? Yeah. And then, did you have any symptoms in your back? Um, I didn't have any pain until like, like pretty recently, and I could feel like um, like a stiffness and a soreness, like when I arched my back. And pray for me, and it's gone now. Karina prayed for your heel. Yes, I okay, now stand right here. <clears throat> now put your hands out like that, palms facing me. Okay, and then slowly 
<laughs> Bring them all the way forward. Okay. Is your shoulder lower than that one? Okay. In between, like my shoulder blades here. Oh, okay. Now put your hands on the top of her hip bone. Okay. See that right there? Yeah. The top of it. Okay. Put your hand there. Okay. Okay. Close your eyes. Put your hand right there. All right. Now tell us if you feel anything now. Just relax. Anything? Anything? Sense anything? You're not sure? Okay. Have a seat right there. I don't know if my hips were. Scoot all the way back there. Yeah. Check the legs. Mm -hmm. no, no. Put your thumb above the, under the ball on her foot, on each foot, your thumb. Underneath the ball. Oh, underneath, the ball. underneath the ball. Okay. Can they look even? <laughs> they look even. Everything's fine. Okay. You're all healed up. Thank you. You speak in Thank tongues? No, I don't. Okay. There you go. Close your eyes. She's gonna start you pray for you to speak in tongues. Just close your eyes, relax. Get out of her body right now. Hey, there's another snake in there. That one's coming out right now. Come out of there right now. Hurry up. Come out. Fire right now. Go. Come out of me. There he is, right there. Tell him to come out. You snake, you come out. Out of her head. Come out, you snake. Out you go, you rotten devil. I hate your guts. How's it going? Came in for deliverance. From what? Uh, From who? <clears throat> now, we went over this six years ago. You know, a bigger one came up, but then a lot of deliverance, and now there's a bigger one I can't get out. From your dad? I believe so. I had dreams that it's been rejection. Oh, like, that's what my dreams tell me. How'd your dad reject it? The verbal abuse. How'd your dad reject it? The verbal abuse. <laughs> he broke our spirit. Is he dead? Huh? Is he dead? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Raise your hands. All right, there we go. Lord Jesus, I'm not, I don't understand this case. I'm Miss, there it comes. Coming up right now. There he is. Coming out right now. That's him. Keep coughing. Come out. Go. Come out of there. Go. Go, there it comes. Go. Come on. Keep. There he comes. Come out. It's coming out right now. Go. There it comes. Next one. Go. Go. Here it comes. There it comes. Come on. Go all the way. All the way. What's she doing? Is there some other man? Is there another man? Squeto. Huh? His name is Squeto. What did he do to you? He abused me emotionally, stole from me. Squeto? Squeto. Yes. Well, go ahead and re repent of it. You, used to, you, had, you got a lot of bad feelings about him. Jesus called that ought. You can't have any ought for Squeto. You won't get delivered if you have it. Go ahead and repent of it. Come on there right now. Yeah. Get out of that body right now. Come out right now. There he is right now. Keep coughing. Come out right now. Turning on him with a vengeance. I am turning with him with the gift of hate. Hold that. Hold that. Come out. Come out right now. Come on. Get him out of there. You got the anointing. This is your chance. Come out. This is your chance. You got the anointing. It's all over you. Go. There it is. Keep coughing. Come out. Come out of there. 
Come out of there. What's she doing? I can feel the, huh? I can feel the Holy Spirit. Of course you can. He likes you. Just close your eyes and repeat after me. Ready? Can you say it on the side of What's wrong with that ear? I've been deaf in this ear since I was born. You were deaf since you were born? Here. Ready? Oh, right. <laughs> you foul devil in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out of that ear. You. Come out. And you go. <laughs> Nothing? Okay, maybe it's not a demon. Lord, we ask you to heal. What's wrong with the ear? Well, um, other people I've gone to said it was because of my mother, because I have a brother who has the same thing. But is there he, nothing wrong? Is there your ears fine? I, I don't know. I, I think I can hear like very, very low tones, like no. when I've been tested for it. I mean, did you go to a otolaryngologist and they examined your ear and yes. did they tell you there was anything wrong with your inner ear? I have no idea. I haven't been tested since I was a child, so I don't know like, you know, what's causing it. Okay. Lord, we don't know what's wrong with this ear, but if it's the mother, is that what you said? The mother? The brother. If it's the brother that gave the demon to the brother, you're the, hey, what are you stopping for? What are you stopping for, young lady? Stop that. Come out right now. Come out quicker. Don't you stop again. Come out right now. Come out quicker. There it comes. Good. There it goes. Come out quicker. Quicker. You don't stop. Come out. You don't stop. Come out. Come out of there. Come out. Come out of my throat. Come out right now, I said. Hurry up. There he comes. Come out of her. There he comes. Glory to God. Coming out now. Come out right now. Come out of there. Come out of there. I want you to get mad at every evil spirit hiding in your body. Just get mad at him. I hate your guts. Come out of me right now. You get out of there right now. Don't you dare stop. Come out. Come out right now. Come out of there right there quick. Get out. Get out right now. Quickly. Quickly come out. Quicker. Safe and loose your hold. Get out of my stomach right now. Come out of my There it comes. Come out right now. Come out. Come out right now. Get out of that body. Come out of that body right now. Go in Jesus' name. Go. Go in Jesus' mighty name. Go right now. Every relative I ever had any bad feelings for, every one of them go now. Every, there they come. Here they come. Bad relatives, come out. There they are. Bad relatives, go. Go. Food demon, come out of that body right this second. The demon that uses food as a comfort instead of the Holy Spirit. Using food as a comfort, I repent of it right now and I command you to go. Get out of my body right now. Right now, just get mad. Get out of my body right now. Rejection from every relative. Every relative. Every one of them. Self rejection. Hating myself. Hating my body. Get out of that body right now. You food demon, you pig. Come out of there, you hog. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Come out of there, you pig. Another one. Yawn again. Come out, devils. Every one of them. Everyone. Come out of me. Get out of my husband. Get out of my husband right now, you filthy spirit. Come out. Right now. Come out of my husband. Come out. Come out of me right now. I've had enough of this. I've had enough of this. Every evil spirit from my husband. Come out. My husband. Get out of there right now. Every husband. All of them. Every man. Every sexual abuser. Come out of my body right now. Go. Come out of my spine. Come out of my spine. Out of my spine. Go. 
Get out. 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 Get Mommy, Get out of that body. Mommy, you are coming out of my body right now. I've had enough of it. I'm supposed to be praying for the sick and not messing around with demons. Get out. Stop blocking my healing anointing, you piece of garbage. Come out of my body right now. You pervert. Demon of rage and anger, I bind your power. Get out of that body right now. Get out of there. Get out. Come out. Come out right now. Come out right now. Go. Get out of that body right this second. Get out of my body right now. And I command you in the name of Jesus. Negative thoughts. Come out. Low self-esteem. Come out. Self-hatred. Come out. Self-hatred. Come out. Get out of there. Come out. Fear of the future. Come out. Go now. Out. Where'd he go? Huh? My, remember I told I did the surgery on my foot? It's worse. They talk about joint replacement. I said, no way. Everything is worse. Everything is hurt. I did on me. And they have enough time to be normal. Now, how are you doing at work? I'm applying for supervisor now. <laughs> I'm applying for the uh, interview, looking for a job. <laughs> how are you doing? It keeps coming up. So you get them out quickly. Come on, faster. Get mad. Just get mad. Come on, sweetheart. <laughs> There you go. Come out quicker. Come out now. Right now. Go now. You're going to be a supervisor? Are you sure? Huh? I need, I need to learn. I need to. I'm praying for God for me to lose this year. Because I don't want to be a nurse. I'll be dealing with people very, very smart with doctors. And uh, one of the floor managers is a pastor, used to be a pastor. And he was asking me if I don't want to be a supervisor. I mean, okay, to go nursing. Why not? But uh, this is what I feel good because I'm seeing my fears. I'm passing out. At the same time, see that I can do things. I, I just, for me, it's been good because I'm working on myself. Before I used to be so fearful, I'm losing the fear. And those crazy Brazilians just be very nice. <laughs> And pray for them. Right. That's it. Okay. And the lady, oh, it's so nice. Oh no, just pray for Lord. Okay. Don't. When when will you get promoted? I'm away. Come out. I'm away to be interviewed with the, uh, you know, the person, the HR, the director. Away. The company has a project is to wait. So let's see what I have. Will you let me know? Well, we don't make a lot of money. I have been working for five years. You know how my race was? No. Send me a Facebook. Come out right now. Go ahead. Come out of there. Get out of my body right now. I command you to go. I command you to come out of my body right now. Come out right now. Rejection from her dad. Come out right now. Go. 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 Fear. Fear. Good big guy's you. back. How you doing? I'm good. So good to see you. You too. You look bigger. Yeah. How you doing? I lost a lot of weight. And, yeah, I see um, that trimming down. Yeah, I'm joining the army. You are? Oh boy. Combat medic. Oh. It's a stressful job. It was a job are that you? it called out like really bad. Like, it, How are you doing spiritually? Um, still a fight. 
It is, I'll admit, but other than that, I've been... When are you going to Army? January 2nd. Well, right Things now, are gonna it's get delayed. Delayed? For the moment. So I don't know. Okay, well, uh, can I pray for you? Yes. Lord, see this man of God standing here? He's got issues, spiritual issues. And he's getting ready to go in the army. And the army's a tough place to work out spiritual issues. There's a lot of pressure and pain and demonic activity in the army. Stress, fear, violence, demonic insanity. Lord God, I'm asking you, help him. So he's ready when he goes in, so he doesn't get destroyed spiritually. The devil's waiting for him in the army. Take a shot at him. And I'm asking you to save him from this misery, from this pain. I'm asking you to forgive him for not putting you first in every area of his life, for holding back in some areas. I'm asking you to forgive him. I'm asking for mercy for him. I'm asking you to touch him, Lord. The Holy Ghost. Take a big breath. <gasps> Again. In. Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Good. Come. Thank you, Jesus. Good. Come in, Holy Ghost. There we go. Thank you, Jesus. Come in. There we go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Tell him you love him. Thank you, Jesus. Come in, Holy Spirit. I love you. Come in, Holy Spirit. I love you. Have mercy upon me. I love you, Lord Jesus. Good. I love you, dear Lord. I praise you, Lord. And I love you. I love you, Jesus. Good. There you go. Perfect. Go. I love you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I love you. Holy Ghost in, sin out. Holy Spirit, come in. Fear, go. Holy Spirit, come in. Lies, leave. Anointing, come in. Holy Spirit, come in. A lust, go. Out. Thank you, Jesus. It's Holy Spirit in. All demons out. Go. Go. Come in. Come out. Come out of there, devil. Satan, lose your hold of the preacher of God. Lose your hold over him. Come out of his spine. Go. Come out of his mind. Ouch. 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 And go. YouTubers, the Holy Ghost ran wild tonight. He'll run wild next Thursday and next Friday. Live stream Thursday, YouTube channel Friday. Go to the website, hardcorechristianity.com, and hit hit the post-deliverance button. And go through that 12-step program so you don't lose your healing tonight. And then hit the teaching button. Hit the teaching button. So you and read these two articles. Number one, Satan's counterattack. Number two, how Satan controls the mind. That's his secret weapon, controlling your mind. I will see you back here at 7 o'clock sharp next Friday. Love you. 7 p.m. Mountain Time. See you next time.